Good evening. My name is Chad Brown. As president of Zane State College, I have the distinct honor to welcome you and to kick off the 2021 commencement ceremony. I would like to acknowledge the graduates of the class of 2021, the family members and friends who have supported you, and the employees of Zane State College who have also supported you along the way. They say it takes a village, and though absolutely true, none of us would be here today if it weren't for the hard work and dedication of each one of these graduates. What a year we've had. Just about 14 months ago, all of our lives were turned upside down. Every one of you found yourselves thrust into an online learning environment that you weren't ready for and that likely was not ready for you. We've spent the past year wearing masks, keeping our distance from strangers, and even avoiding family for fear of exposing the most vulnerable among us. I heard one faculty member say, this year's graduates really have heart. That struck me and I spent some time thinking about what that means. In nearly every culture around the world, you can find reference to the heart. In ancient Egypt, during the mummification process, all organs were removed from the body, except the heart, as it was believed to be the vessel that held the soul. In the United States, sometimes it seems like we can do anything with our heart. We're told to follow our heart, feel with our heart, protect our heart, take heart, and even surrender our heart. You get the idea. The list is nearly endless. It also isn't possible to think about the heart without considering the idea of a broken heart. I think that if there is one thing that has brought us together over this last year, it may be our broken hearts. Collectively, our hearts are broken. Our hearts are broken because we have lost loved ones due to the global pandemic. Others have simply lost family and friends during the pandemic that they couldn't spend some time with due to restrictions, while others still have just lost time with those they love. Our hearts are broken as we continue to see the impact of poor mental health and the devastation of lives caused by addiction, both made worse by this pandemic. Our hearts are broken as we watch a broken nation divided by issues of race and stoked by extremists and both marginalized and weaponized by our politicians for their own gain. Despite all of this, I believe we can overcome and rise above the challenges of the day. That starts with you today. As you leave here today, a college graduate, know that your generation will be called upon to step up and lead. Just remember to have heart. Let me end with this story. On June 9, 1973, Secretariat became the first Triple Crown winner since 1948. In his short two-year racing career, Secretariat started 21 races, of which he won 16 and placed in the top three in 20. His performance on the track was so dominant that before he had even won the Belmont Stakes, his lifetime breeding rights had all been sold. What made this horse so special? And why did his offspring never perform in similar fashion? Well, upon his death in 1989, it was found that Secretariat's heart weighed over 22 pounds, nearly twice the size of the average thoroughbred horse. Secretariat's capacity to run and his ability to excel was due likely to his heart's oversized capacity and its ability to deliver oxygen-rich blood to his massive muscular frame. Contrast this with the much-famed Grinch, whose tiny heart was said to grow three sizes that fateful Christmas morn, a miserable creature trying desperately to find his way in a world that seemed not to accept him, the Grinch realized that it was his own misperceptions that kept him from fitting in among the folks in Whoville. Few of us are born like Secretariat, recognized for some academic or athletic prowess at an early age. Instead, for most of us, life is a journey. Over time, we as children and later as young adults 
learn and experience new things, and our interests and passions are drawn in specific directions. I imagine that each one of your journeys at Zane State College went something like this as well. As you go forward today, I hope that you look upon your journey with a sense of pride. I want you to know that each and every person watching today is proud of you. For some of you, the challenges you've already faced in life may be far greater than those you've experienced here. And for others, college may seem like it stretched you to the very end. While completing your education will certainly not be the last great challenge of your lives, the experiences you've had at Zane State College over this last year have provided you with the skills and the confidence to face new challenges head on. Graduates, on behalf of your friends and family at Zane State College, I would like to congratulate you on your achievements and remind you as you go forward it is important to have heart. Before we hear from our commencement speaker, I'd like to share these messages from Zane State College employees. <laughs> Not it. It'll be okay. Don't come back to visit. Graduates, don't forget about us, because we won't forget about you. Congratulations, graduates! From anatomy and physiology, zoology, biology, and chemistry, congratulations on your graduation. We know this last year has been crazy. It's all downhill from here. We wish you the best. And get vaccinated. From the Physical Therapist Assistant Program, we are so proud of you. Congratulations! This is what you were dreaming about when you came to us. Congratulations, grads! We are proud of you! The Zane State College Registrar's Office congratulates you. You did it! You did it! Congrats! Congratulations from the Office of Human Resources. Congratulations, grads! We're so proud of you. Great job. Nobody can take a punch like you! Congratulations, class of 2021! Woo! Congratulations! All of you uh, students have worked really hard, and I know that uh, your inspiration has come from being out in the wild. Whether it's quantitative reasoning or statistics, college algebra or algebra and track, or calculus and pre-calculus, you did it! Congratulations, Congratulations from, from the, the math, math department! department. From the Radiologic Technology Program, we would like to congratulate all of you for all of your achievements and tell you how proud of you we are. For all the obstacles you've overcome this past year, we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Congratulations to all the Zane State 2021 graduates and a special congratulations to our Occupational Therapy Assistant students. Have a ball. Congratulations from the business office. We're proud of you. Woo! I'm Dean Klein. I'm Dean Moore. And I'm Dean Zimmerman. On behalf of Academic Services, congratulations. congratulations! I hope that message came across loud and clear. We are all so proud of you. Now I'm honored to introduce your 2021 commencement speaker, Dr. Richard Woodfield, the immediate past provost of Zane State College. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Richard Woodfield. Uh, some of you might remember I was the uh, provost and chief ac academic officer here at Zane State College. I retired in, in December, and I'm now the chief academic officer for the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. So I was really honored and excited to be asked uh, to give this uh, reflection on, on your graduation, this, this important event. And I began thinking about what it means to be earning your degree from Zane State College in 2021. Who you are as a group and what unique and shared experiences you've all had. And I began to think about what words came to mind. And so I'm going to center my talk tonight about those words and 
how they seem to help me think about you as a group. So the first word is persistence. And I think about what COVID-19 has done to us as a people and what it has done to you in your endeavors as a student. Um, it, it really is uh, remarkable that here we are today at your graduation ceremony. So last March, it all began, right? A year ago in March, we all found out that this is potentially dangerous. And we started becoming more and more concerned about our health and safety. And we know that uh, our communities have taken a, a, a difficult blow that hurt us economically, hurt us emotionally, and also have caused some of us to lose dear people to us. So I think it's important that we pause and think at this moment about those lives lost during this tragic worldwide experience and think about how that has also impacted you all in your journey to this moment. The overwhelming need to change and to adapt to new conditions was a big part of our response to COVID-19. The next word that popped to mind was perseverance. And we think about America and who we are as a nation and how we got to where we are today. And I think an important part of that story is that we are a nation of immigrants. And why I think that's so important is because my grandfather was an immigrant. He came over from Sweden with his mom and dad. Uh, they left Sweden with a single trunk with all their worldly possessions and they got on a ship. And they took that ship to Boston Harbor. From Boston Harbor, they got on a train. They had to have, back then, to immigrate to the United States, a family member to sponsor them. So they had a relative in Jamestown, New York. So they took a train to Jamestown, New York, with their one trunk of possessions. And with that trunk, they started to build a life here in the United States. They had to find jobs. They had to find a place to live. They had to learn a new language. And most of that language came from their kids when they got old enough to go to school. They came back and taught mom and dad how to speak English better. I do remember my great-grandmother's broken English, so it was so a great memory of mine. My great-grandfather was a tool and die maker, so he had skills that were important to America. And he was able to establish himself and begin that American dream and that journey. But he never owned a car. He walked to work every day. Um, carried his lunch pail, and my grandfather did the same thing afterwards. He did have a car, um, but that was, that was a wonderful life for him. Uh, America offered something that was very special. The next word I was thinking about was determination. And I think about my grandfather as he became a young man and entered the workforce himself, and a World War II broke out, and how all of that impacted the United States and the world similar to what we're experiencing now. And my grandfather ended up being a factory foreman and he built uh, 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 steel doors, metal doors. Um, some of them were built for U.S. Navy vessels. Some of them were built for new skyscrapers in the city of New York. And I think about those doors and where they are today and um, how my grandfather contributed to um, our society by his hard labor. My grandfather had two uh, daughters and then some grandchildren that I happened to be a part of that. And one of my favorite stories of my grandfather was talking about how if communities raised money, the state of New York would build a community college for them in their community. They had to purchase the land. And my grandfather participated in that fund drive, um, not for himself, but he knew that his legacy would be his children and grandchildren uh, that someday may take advantage of that, um, of that institution of higher learning. So I am a first generation college student like many of you today who are graduating. My mom and dad did not go to college uh, or, or should, did not earn a degree. My mom did get an LPN credential um, and she did take psychology, I think, at that community college that my grandfather helped build. Um, but I got my associate's degree like you are today, and then I continued on and got a bachelor's degree, and then a master's, and then eventually a doctorate degree. I think about the next word is overcoming. 
right? Because we look at all the challenges um, that our people have had before us and what we have experienced ourselves, and that's an important trait to have, to be able to overcome. And when I think of my family story and I think about southeastern Ohio, I think there are a lot of family stories similar to mine in southeastern Ohio. So if you think about your own family history, how did your people overcome? What challenges, what obstacles are part of your family story that build you who are you, the character that you are today? Whose shoulders are you standing on today? Because of their efforts and labors and, and generosity, here we are today moving forward with a new degree. That's an awesome thing to think about and consider. And what is your personal story? Today there are members of this graduating class who have overcome overwhelming obstacles to get to this moment. Some of you are still worried that at any moment now, they are going to find out that you are an imposter. Well, today, you have a piece of paper that proves you are not an imposter. Some of you graduates are parenting and have whole families of achievers who have sacrificed a great deal to arrive here with you on this great moment. Some of you have not skipped a beat from your success in high school. You went right on to college, and here you are with a college degree in hand. And we think about the great teachers and parents and family and friends who have been a part of that success story for you. The next word is resolve. As we all pause and consider how we got here and who has helped us along in this journey, be sure to begin your gratitude, gratitude tour today and tell everybody how much they matter to you and how much they impacted and helped you in your success. The next word that I have is tenacity. Where is America going next? We are constantly reinventing ourselves and reinventing what work is and how we go to work, um, as we've seen in this last year, is very different and that may continue to be different for a lot of us going forward. How are we changing and adapting to be able to be in this world? I think a lot of you graduates know what I'm talking about. How you went to class before COVID and how you learned after COVID were very two different uh, experiences. And you adapted and you overcame. What is going to be new today um, will be old very quickly. How are we prepared to be ready for the new and yet to come at even faster rates is all about what is important about what you've learned over this last year. You are graduating from a college that is committed to being relevant in this time of change. This institution is working hard to facilitate change so that its students enter careers that are current, that have livable wages, and that they are effective at teaching all people, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, social economic background, or if they came from a family that had higher education experience. Zane State College knows that it is not easy to be successful with lots of challenges that, it, that are existing in the world. And they're working very hard to make sure those barriers are broken down, student after student after student. The next word is doggedness. What are you doing next? You see, education is not about what social class we belong to. It's about existing in a modern world of work and how the educated can contribute to their own happiness, care for a family, and support an evolving business and industry enterprise that keeps our communities vibrant. Your future success is something that everyone here is investing in. Everyone in our community is investing in. Everyone in your family is investing in. For your success is our community, community's success, our state's success, our nation's success, and yes, more and more, 
even our world's success. We think about what the vaccine is currently doing around the globe and how Americans have contributed to that. So please, after you get done celebrating today, think about sharing this good news, the good news that you've experienced to all those who are afraid to try. Support those who don't believe in themselves. Encourage them by your good example of what higher education has done for you. Having this degree under your belt should allow you to go boldly forth and be undaunted by the need for additional education your career may need in the future. You've been there. You got through it. You got through it with, with great success. You can do it again and again whenever that need is, is uh, called for. Have great confidence in yourselves and your ability for today you are graduating from the best college in Ohio, Zane State College. My sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. I sure wish I could say this to you in person and shake your hand. My best wishes go with you always. Thank you, Dr. Woodfield, for your thoughtful remarks. Because we are unable to hold a traditional commencement ceremony, we have put together this video tribute honoring the 2021 graduates. Several weeks ago, all of our 2021 graduates were invited to participate in a grad walk. Graduates were encouraged to submit a photo to accompany their names. Congratulations, Zane State College graduating class of 2021.